and welcome to a no so chunky cardigan tutorial. This is what she looks like. I am calling her the Sally cardigan. The best part about this is that it works up very fast and there's no sewing involved with the exception of weaving in any ends and also sewing on any buttons, which is totally optional. So this only took me four and a half hours. Granted, it is a size small, so it will vary with what size you want to make it and also what length you want to make it because I made mine a crop. However, regardless, it's going to work up really fast and with the absence of sewing all the pieces together, it's going to be super fast and super easy. So a quick introduction of myself. I am Jada of Mrs. Moon and Heaven. We are a fashion brand and we make a lot of crochet garments and crochet patterns. So this is going to be a pattern that will be available for purchase. It's so if you wanted to look along a PDF file while you do this and also have specific sizes, it will be there and that will be linked in the description. So as I said, the size that I'm making is a size small, but this is made to fit slightly oversized. So I guess it would fit a true medium. So, you know, if you wanted it to fit more true to size, then go down a size. But if you want to have it fit the way that I have it and the way that I designed it, you can follow the sizes listed or you can follow the instructions in this tutorial. So let's get started. So what we're going to need is you're going to need a bulky size 5 yarn. I'm using Loops and Threads Charisma, which is really nice. It's super soft. It's 100% acrylic. I used about four or five skeins of this and they are 109 yards each skein and 100 grams. You're also going to need an 8 millimeter hook, a 7 millimeter hook, and you're going to need a darning needle, which is big enough to fit some chunky yarn and some scissors. So I start off by pulling through the middle. Uh, this is a good yarn to pull through the middle. It'll go nice and smooth. So we're going to start off with the back panel. So using your seven millimeter hook, we're going to make a slip stitch and chain seven. This is going to be the ribbing. Then in the second chain from the hook, you are going to start single crocheting down the chain. So you should end up with six single crochets in total. When you get to the end, you're going to chain one and turn and you're going to start going into the back loops only and do a back loop only single crochet all the way down until you reach the last stitch. In the very last stitch, you are going to do a regular single crochet through both loops. Chain one and turn and you are going to repeat this all the way until you get the width of your cardigan. This is going to depend on how big you want it and also where you want it to lay. So if it's a cropped or if you want it to be up to your waist or if you want it to be even longer than that. If you want it to be cropped, hold it up around your waist or wherever you want it to fall. If you want it around your waist, hold it to your waist. And if you want it even longer, you could hold it around your thighs. For a size small crop, I did 34 rows total single crochet. Using the same yarn from your ribbing and switching to an eight millimeter hook, you are going to chain one and each one of these rows is going to count as a stitch to go into. You are going to half double crochet in every stitch, increasing on the fifth stitch. So starting in the first stitch, I have one half double crochet. Then going into that next row, I'm going to do another half double crochet. And so on until I reach the fifth stitch or the fifth row from the previous rounds. And so here on the fifth stitch, I'm going to place two half double crochets. This is going to make the body come out a little bit just so it gets that nice kind of baggy shape and the ribbing is a little more cinched than the rest of the body. You are going to repeat that all the way down. So one half double crochet in every row or stitch and two half double crochets in every fifth stitch. If you want to change color at the very last stitch, you can either fasten it off, chain one and fasten off, or you can start to do a half double crochet by yarning over, inserting your hook, and pulling up a loop. So then you have three loops on your hook, and instead of finishing with the first color, you're going to pull in the new color, and then chain one and turn. If you're keeping the same color, you can just half double crochet, chain one, and turn. And from here, we are going to do one half double crochet in each stitch with the exception of the first and last stitch in which we're going to increase. So we're going to place two half double crochets in the first stitch. 
And then in every stitch up until the end, we're going to place one half double crochet. And once you get to the end, the very last stitch, you're going to place two half double crochets. Chain one and turn. And from here, it's the easiest part. You're just going to repeat a half double crochet in every stitch, chain one and turn, and you're going to do that all the way up until you reach your desired length, making sure that it's an odd amount of total rows, including the first row in which we did increases in every fifth stitch. So I did a total of 23 rows. And just for reference, this was my first skein of yarn. So I did about 10 inches of work in terms of length and then about 14 inches wide. So once you get your desired length, we are going to divide the total amount of stitches by three because we are going to start creating the two front panels. So I have 43 stitches, which obviously isn't divisible evenly by three. It's like 14.33333. So just round down to the nearest stitch or the nearest number. And that's where you're going to place your stitch marker. So I have one on the 14th stitch from both ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to start half double crocheting and we're going to increase down to make a V shape. So you want it to meet in the middle, keeping in mind that we're going to add this ribbing, which is about two inches or four half double crochets. So divide the total amount of stitches that you ended up with by two and subtract four. And that is how much you are going to increase until on each side. If you didn't end with an even amount of stitches, so you can't divide it by two, that's fine, just round down. So specifically for mine, I started off with 43 stitches divided by two, that's 21.5, so I round down to 21. So I am going to increase at the middle, I'll, which I'll show you, until I reach 21 stitches for each panel. So begin that row the same as you would any row with a chain one and half double crochet in every stitch up until you reach that stitch marker. So I'll have 14 stitches across for mine specifically. Once you reach that point, you're going to chain one and turn and in the very first stitch, you are going to place an increase. So you're going to place two half double crochets and then you're going to just place one half double crochet in every stitch until the end. When you reach the end of that round, you're going to chain one and repeat as usual, half double crocheting in every stitch up until you get to the very last stitch is where we're going to place that increase once again. So as you can see, there's going to be a pattern going on where we're going to increase in the inner section of the panel until we reach the total number that we came up with. So for me, it's going to be 17 stitches. And I just wanted to show you right here it's going to look like a weird stitch. That's going to be that chain one space is going to be the very last space that you're going to increase in. And if you're not sure, just count the total number of stitches that you have and just make sure that it's one more than the amount that you had from the previous row. So keep repeating this over and over again, these two rows until you reach half of the total amount of stitches you ended up with from the big panel minus four. So right now I have the increases completed and now we just need to half double crochet all the way down until we reach the same amount of rows that we have from the back panel so i have six rows done right now and i had a total of 23 rows done in the back panel so i need to do 17 more rows down and just do half double crochets per stitch until you reach the same amount of stitches so now that we have an equal amount of rows in the front panel as we do in the back panel we're going to start doing the ribbing which is going to be an attach as you go method so start off by changing back to your seven millimeter hook and chain seven which is what we started off with when we first did our foundation row for the ribbing and once you have seven chains you're going to go and insert six single crochets Once you get to the base of the chain, you're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches at the bottom of the front panel. You're not going to chain one and you're just going to turn. And then you are going to go back to the single crochets and back loop only single crochet for five stitches. 
and on the very last stitch you're going to do a regular single crochet just like how we did the ribbing in the first place. Chain one and turn and place six back loop only single crochets until you get to the base and place two slip stitches into the bottom of the panel once again. And you are going to repeat these two rows over and over until you get to the end of the front panel. Once you're done with this, try on your garment for now and see where you want to place your arms. I recommend doing it at least 10 rows down so that way the armhole is big enough um, to be around 40 stitches. It can be even bigger than that, um, but I would recommend starting at least that big so that way it will fit your wrist properly when we do the decreases. And then we're going to slip stitch up the rest of the way in order to connect the front panel with the back panel. And then you're going to repeat the entire process of the front panel on the opposite side attaching a new piece of yarn to the opposite corner. So I'll meet you back here when you're done with that. Alright, so I was actually rushing because this was a last minute quick, quick project so just pretend that I have the other panel done. And then once you're done you're going to go back to your 7mm hook and we're going to do the ribbing up the insides and the collar. Attach a new piece of yarn to the bottom corner of the ribbing. I like to start on the right side when worn. That's more comfortable for me. If the other side's more comfortable for you, then that's great. Repeat the same process that you did before. Chain seven and single crochet six down and slip stitch twice to connect. No chain one, turn, single crochet up, back loop only five, and then in the last stitch do a regular single crochet. Chain one and do six single crochets down slip stitch twice to repeat and you're going to repeat that all the way around the project until you get to the opposite end of the ribbing. If you want to insert buttonholes that's very simple I'll show you that in a second. If not you're just going to repeat this process all the way around until you get to the opposite corner. So if you're going to insert buttonholes the first buttonhole you should place should be in the third row. I'm going to do the second one around midway through but if you're going to do three you would want it to be evenly spaced so I would measure out what, how far apart that you want it based on inches or how many rows apart you wanted it. But I'm just doing two so you could just eyeball it when it's two. So you're going to start off by placing two single crochet back loop only stitches and then you're going to chain two. And then you're going to skip two and single crochet back loop only in the next two stitches. This is going to be for large size button only because if it was too small it's going to just go right through. So once you get to the end of the last stitch you're going to slip stitch twice again no chain one and turn and you are going to place two back loop only single crochets and then either into that chain two space or over it you're going to place two single crochets then in the next stitch place one back loop only single crochet and in the last stitch you're going to place one single crochet and then you're going to repeat as normal all the way up until you get to the next buttonhole in which you're going to repeat the same process. Alright, change of setting because uh, like I said I was scrambling. So once you're done with that ribbing, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to fasten that off. And now we're going to work on the arms. So in that space that we left open when we slip stitched together, we're going to place half double crochets. If you're going to change color in these sleeves, I recommend that you choose one of the colors of the panels that you're coming off of so that way the color change is a lot more smooth. I worked with a really dark purple on the other sleeve and so the attachment of it is kind of jarring like I wish that I had started off with a gray and then moved into the dark purple. So if you're doing that color change on the first round start with one of those colors so in this case it would be purple or gray and then after the first round then you could do a color switch but if you're using the same color, it doesn't matter. So attach a piece of yarn to the bottom of the armhole. So right where that seam is that you made from earlier. And then you're going to insert your hook and we're using the eight millimeter hook again. And we are going to place half double crochets all the way around, placing about two in each um, half double crochet that you're going around. You can also eyeball it, just make sure that the stitches look nice and even, but you want to place at least 40 within this circle.
Once you get all the way around, you are going to slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet. Then you're going to chain one, and this is important for a straight seam along the arm. You are going to turn your work. And then in that same stitch, you're going to place a half double crochet and repeat all the way around. So one half double crochet per stitch all the way around, placing 40 stitches around. When you get to the end of the round, it's going to look like you have one really tight stitch left. That does not count as a stitch. You are going to skip over that one and place a slip stitch at the top of the half double crochet, chain one and turn. And you are going to repeat this for every single round. And if you're not sure if that's a stitch or not, whether you should place a half double crochet or not, when in doubt, just count your stitches around. Repeat these rounds over and over again until you are able to put on the cardigan and the sleeve ends about three and a half inches from your wrist. So my sleeve ends up being 26 rows long before it reaches three and a half inches from my wrist. So I'm just going to slip stitch that last row, chain one, and now we are going to start doing decreases. So that way the arm starts to fit around our wrist. So we're going to start off as normal by chaining one and placing one half double crochet. In the next two stitches, we're going to place a half double crochet decrease. So we're going to yarn over, insert into one stitch, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and pull through all of the loops. The next stitch, we're going to place one half double crochet, and then in the following two stitches, we're going to decrease again. And you're going to repeat this process all the way around your sleeve. When you get back to the beginning of the round, you're going to slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet, chain one and turn. And now we're going to work decreases into every single stitch. So in the next two stitches, we're going to do a decrease. And in the following two stitches, we're going to do a decrease again. And we are going to repeat that all the way around until we get to the beginning. If you have an uneven number of stitches, then you can just place a regular half double crochet in the last stitch. Once again, at the end of the round, you're going to place a slip stitch at the top of the first half double crochet from the beginning of the round. It might look a little wonky because you have these big decreases, but just find that first half double crochet and slip stitch into there. And now we're going to switch back to our seven millimeter hook because we're going to work the cuffs of the sleeve and we are going to chain seven. We are going to repeat the same exact process that we did for the ribbing on the bottom and the um, middle and collar of the panels on the sleeves. So single crochet six, slip stitch twice to connect to the sleeve. Turn and do five single crochet back loop only stitches. And then in the very last stitch, you're going to do one regular single crochet. Chain one and place six single crochet back loop only. And you're going to repeat that until you get all the way around. And once you're done with this, you're just going to turn your sleeve inside out and slip stitch to connect. I prefer slip stitching in the back loop only of the last round with the foundation. And once you're done with this, you're going to chain one and fasten off and you're going to weave in all your ends and you should be done. Unless you have buttons to sew on, then sew on your buttons evenly across from your buttonholes. And then yeah, that's it. Your quick and easy no sew chunky cardigan. And look how cute it looks for a short amount of time, not a lot of work, and it's just so cute. And I love her. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you want to see the pattern, look in the description. And if you make one, please tag us at Mrs. Moon Heaven. We would love to see it, and we hope that you enjoy your new cardigans. A huge shout out to our patrons. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider looking at our Patreon and joining. For our Little Moon members, which starts at $5 a month, you can get videos just like this that are exclusive to you or early access. And for our Shooting Star members at Up, you get at least one written pattern sent to you every month. 
You get other super cool perks like being shown on our videos and also sometimes having patterns named after you like the Brianna sweater vest. Thank you so so much for supporting us whether that's on Patreon or just otherwise anywhere else. You guys are awesome.